So last time we set up a way for the app to scan a barcode uh, of a comic. Now we want to set up a way to take a photo of the comic. That's going to require that we um, have a button visible to the user that will initiate that will be the the trigger to take a photo that button we will create in the HTML then we need to create an object representing it in the JavaScript then we need to create an event listener to wait for a click and then it needs to then take the photo and do its thing its thing will be that the photo is saved into the database and then retrieved from the database to display on screen. Uh, well, all of that before step zero. In order for us to take a photo, we need the plugin that allows our app to uh, uh, interface with the camera. So we need to do that first. Let's go over to our config XML file and let's add the camera plugin. Config XML file, plugins screen. And then we will add camera. This one is built in. It's one of the common uh, plugins that might be used often, so it's there easily from the list. Anna, Danny, and Sergio, do you have a question? So let's add the camera plugin, and then um, next we need to create a button that will activate the camera. Let's do that in the index.html file. We'll do it in the same screen where we previously had to save a comic, where we had the button to scan the barcode. So that should be under PG, or what is it, under pop save comic? What did we call it? What was that pop-up screen? Pop. Um, I don't know it wasn't a pop-up. It was just save. PG save comic. Yes, under PG save comic. So we've got our form with our required items, and then our uh, form of the field set with our optional items. And then in my case, line 180, that's where I added a horizontal ruler, um, a, an input field for the barcode, and then a button to scan the um, to scan the barcode. So in this spot, we're going to add a way to take a photo. Now, <clears throat> we'll have also here a horizontal rule to separate it from the, from the other button. We're also going to have an input of type text, no placeholder. ID of in photo. So unique ID as usual. Now here's where this is going to change. This input field will store the location of the photo, not the raw data of the photo. We don't really store that in any database. We don't we don't store the unencoded bits of a photo in the database. We usually store a location, a path, to the location of a photo. On, on, on a server, on the internet, let's say, there is a folder, there's a directory where all the pictures are at, and then the database is just pointing to where the photo is on the server, on its path. So that's what we're going to store into Pouch, a path to the photo. Because what the plugin will do is, um, it'll switch over from our app to the to the camera 
to the camera, the built-in camera of the of the device. And when the when the camera takes a photo, it stores it somewhere on the device or the memory the memory card or something, and there's a path to that photo. So that's what we're going to store into our database. And we'll do that by capturing it in an input field. However, we will say that this input field is hidden. <clears throat> and we will also say that it's disabled. I don't need the person to change that path that's being stored into this box. So it's disabled. I don't even need for them to see it. So it's hidden to the user. I'm also going to add style. I'm going to add a little bit of inline style. We could do this via CSS. You know what? Actually, we'll do it via CSS, so never mind for the moment. We can use CSS because we've got an ID attached. And it's often better to not have embedded style because out of these hundreds of lines of code, where did I apply that class to? If instead we borrow this ID a little later, we can make sure that the input field is hidden just in case, because I've noticed on some devices or some browsers, it hides it in others, it at least disables it. Next line, an input button. A button that will initiate the, the camera. So value, snap a pic, or whatever you want to say. Take a photo, uh, snap a picture, what other ways can we say it, depending on our, on our demographics? I guess there's not that many different ways. Camera, we can just have it say camera, or have a little photo. We can have the icon of the camera too. Data dash roll. I guess it's camera. Not data roll, data icon. And then an ID so that we uh, start to take a photo. BTN. We have BTN scan barcode, BTN take photo. So there will be an input field which will temporarily store the path to the photo after the person clicks the button, taps the button to take the photo. It's an input field of a generic button type. It has a value of text, snap a pic, take a photo, however we want to say it. It'll have the icon of a camera because of jQuery mobile. And an ID that we need it mostly for the JavaScript, but it, we can also use it for the CSS. OK, so we, stood, we did step 0, we added the plugin. We did step 1, we created the button and the input field to store or capture the path to the camera. Uh, the next step, step 3, OK, let's start to uh, work with this in JavaScript. And this will be very familiar to what we did with the barcode. We need to create a JavaScript object representing that HTML node. Then we need to create an event listener to listen for the event of clicking on the button. Once the button is clicked, then we need to run a function that takes the photo. So save that, and let's go over to our JavaScript file. And then also, because it's something new that's being saved into the database, we have to tweak our, our data that we're putting into the database. All right, so in the JavaScript file, we got our whole block of variables. We'll need a brand new one. We had one for scanning the barcode. JS object uh, for the photo button. Variable dollar $L. BTN take photo is equal to the jQuery selector BTN take photo. 
We've done that several times. This is another example. I wouldn't say tedious, but here's an example of where you have to do this again. And then we're going to create the event listener again. And then we're going to create the function again. And then it's going to be the details that, that differ uh, per particular um, action of your app. Okay, control end on the keyboard to jump to the end of our code. And we'll create a brand new event listener over here. Handler for snapping a photo. Uh, BTN take photo on method, specifically a click. I'm going to run the function, fn take photo. Let's back up to where we've got our function definitions and we'll define a new function, take photo. So I'll back up right up here uh, and a function barcode. So here's a function to take a photo, store the path to the photo in the input field, which is pound um, in photo. <laughs> so it can be part of the part of db.put eventually. We can note requires the camera, the Cordova camera plugin to be installed. Config XML. Okay, so uh, we did that first before we did anything in our code. Make sure you've added the camera plugin in the config XML. Okay, so defining this function. We'll do the usual end of the function, a little console output that lets us know that this function is running. I think for uh, doing the troubleshooting for people when I, when I go check out your code and such, I think, uh, I think it's been pretty helpful to try to debug it and troubleshoot it when we've got that um, at least that little bit of code there that comes back to us about the function is running yes or no if the function if we never see that console output that starts to let us know well that function hasn't run why let's back up oh our event listener is misspelled or maybe let's back up to that oh I didn't create the object correctly to attach the event listener to and that's very useful Okay, so what's going to happen here is uh, we're going to start to use the J uh, the Cordova uh, command to take a photo. The the Cordova code, well, contrasting it with the barcode scanner, we went off to the the address of the developer of the barcode scanner. Uh, I showed you the documentation a bit, and then in general how it's used and then we applied a version of it here in the barcode scanner function. Uh, for the Cordova one, if I hadn't or if I wasn't going to guide you through a version of taking a photo, 
I would hope that you would go to read the original documentation about how this plugin works. And we'll note it here, even though I'm sure I've said it before, but we can say here um, cordova.apache.org. The documentation for using this plugin. Let's go to cordova.apache.org for a moment. Let's go find the documentation on how to take a photo, how to use the camera. Let's browse it a little bit to see what it's about. And then we'll apply some, some code for our purposes. So let's go to the site for a moment. Uh, where did the sign-in sheet end up? <clears throat> did everyone get the sign-in sheet? All right, so let's go to Cordova, the Cordova website. I think you can actually, in Visual Studio, I think it's too cumbersome, but in Visual Studio, you can control click an active link. In Visual Studio will open a, a web browser in, oh, I guess not. I thought I'd remember it opening in Visual Studio. But anyway, I'm in the browser, and we'll go to the documentation. On the left side, plugins, we'll find the camera documentation. We've installed it, that's fine. Um, okay, iOS quirks. There's some things we need to keep in mind when we're targeting an iOS device. So there's that there. The, the way it actually works then is you have uh, the, um, the camera object, various methods, and also camera properties and camera popover handle and options. So in general, the at the at the very top, well that one's not that useful, uh, but okay, scrolling down, oh here it is, camera, get picture. So the way this works is you've got the object camera and then the get picture method and then a success callback, comma, an error callback, comma, and then options. Well that's very reminiscent of the syntax when we used the scan barcode. So this takes a photo using the camera or retrieves a photo from the device's memory image gallery. The image is passed to the success callback as a base64 encoded string or as the URI of the image file. So when we try to take a photo we are either going to capture the raw data of the photo which is very inefficient or we're going to capture the path to where the photo got stored on the device. Um, so after we try to take a photo, there's either success or there's failure, and then there's options. You can do whatever you want with the encoded image. For example, after we uh, take the photo, grab the image, we can then show it on screen in an image tag, and there's an image below. We can save the data in local storage, or lawn chair, or pouch, or other storage areas. We can save the data to a server. This goes on to say about we have various options when we take a photo, such as quality. And this works on all the platforms. So here's a full example. Navigator, dot camera, dot get picture, camera success, function or camera error function or camera options. Uh, a better example, let's see, there's a lot of info. Okay, then there's a bunch of options. We can put the option about what, what kind of quality from 0 to 100, like how much compression on the photo, destination type. Um, where are we saving it to? Are we saving it as JPEG format? See how there's a type and then there's a default. So the 50% quality, which we can set to 100 or 1%. The default is we're going to get a path to the photo, not the actual raw data. 
Um, by default, we're going to save it in JPEG format. We have other encoding types, and it's listed right there, JPEG or PNG. We can capture the photo with a certain value of width and height, or without any def uh, without anything that we specify, the default will be the original size taken right out of the camera. Do we want to save to the photo album or not? The default is nothing is listed, so actually we would be saving, we would be taking the photo, but it wouldn't really be saving anywhere. Uh, it would just be floating in memory. We can have the back camera, the front, front camera by default. And then it goes on to more detail there. So this is the documentation to make it do different things than what we're going to do. You would read it, you would check the examples, you would say, okay, I want to do this, and this is how it tells me to do it. I want to actually capture a video of me reviewing or making a video note of the comic. That's perfectly fine. We're going to do a photo, but we could also have it record a video. So we'll go back to our code. We can do our note syntax for camera. It's navigator dot camera dot get picture capital P. Success callback. Failure callback. options in uh, JSON format with the curly braces. Okay, so to actually do it, navigator dot camera dot get picture. I'm gonna break apart the curly braces and of get picture. We have our function for success, our function for failure. options. So the syntax again is similar to the barcode, but the barcode was is, is one of these that is not officially like a native one. It was from a third party, but that third party followed the, the syntax and followed the conventions of what these common ones are. And like last time, this is all part of the method of get picture. The first parameter, comma, second parameter, comma, final one, no final comma. And what we'll do is we'll start backwards again in terms of let's do our options, then the failure, then the success. So in our case here in JSON format, we will say quality, just to be completely obvious. I'm going to save it in a really, really low quality, 5%. Uh, I wouldn't do that in the real world. I'd probably have it at 75% or 50%. But just to show us taking a really terrible photo, 5 Now this is going to be several options, so I'm going to break apart the data in the curly braces so that I can then do the next one. Quotes, save to photo album, and notice the capital letters. As usual, after the first word, the T, the P, the A, save to photo album. True.
we saw in the documentation uh, there was no default. So if we don't say this, we're going to take a photo, and we might see the photo at that moment, but if we exit and return to the app, the photo will be gone because we never just said, actually save the photo. So here we have to say, save the photo somewhere in the device. Target width 768 and target height 1024. So our options, setting compression, saving to device, width and height. There are defaults. I believe 50% is the quality. And then no width and height are specified. So it'll be the full raw size of the photo. So we specify the options. If we get a failure, if we're trying to take the photo and for some reason the camera crashes or something else happens, we will make an alert to the user. Photo failed. Whatever message, that'll come back. In the success callback, I'll break that apart to make it readable. I'll write my console output to say success. That will return to the console. Well, we'll make it obvious. We'll say photo path. What happens when you take a photo successfully is that because we said save photo to album, the photo got saved somewhere into the memory of the device, and therefore there is a path to get to that photo. In the console, I want to say photo path. I want to say successful, I will say success, photo path. And then whatever path it was, so that we can just corroborate it. We can look at the console. If the photo is not appearing and it looks like I did everything correct, well, what's going on? I want to see what that path is in the console. Then I want to use the path over here. We've got the in photo. We've got that input field. When we're saving the comic, we made that we've got an we've got an input field that we made a moment ago to store the path of the photo. We're going to set the value of that to success. Success is the path to the photo. So we'll store the path to the photo in the input field when the person then clicks Save Comic. We have one more thing to do, but when they click Save Comic, it will retrieve what was stored in that field, make it as part of our bundle inside of function prep comic, pass it into function save comic. And now it will start to save a path to a photo in our database. So that's the function there so far.
Okay, so we need to back up to our function prep comic all the way back on line 288 or so. Our function where we prepare to store this comic into the database. Here's where we've got these variables that we read from the input fields in the form pg save comic. We need a new we need a new variable, so I'm going to add one after the last variable val in bar, val in barcode. Make sure you change the semicolon at the end to a comma because we're adding a new variable. It's going to be val in photo is equal to in photo, and then semicolon. So let me zoom in just so that you don't miss it. That should be a comma after the barcode, because we're adding a new variable, comma, and then the variable for photo, and then semicolon. So that input field storing the path to the photo has that ID. And as usual, then we use the jQuery selector to find that input field. And oops, one more thing, store the value of it. This would store the whole object. That would not do what we want. We need one more thing, the value of what's in that input field. If we don't say .val, it would store a reference to the whole object, all the properties of the object such as the width and height of that box, the color of the text in it, um, everything of that input field, not just its value. I just want the value of what is in the box. Further down in this same function, we then want to include this new piece of data into the bundle of JSON data that we're passing over to db.put. So scrolling down past the that whole name checker thing further down there, here we go, var temp comic. This is our bundle of data. We've taken all the input fields, bundled them into one JSON object. So we've got ID, title, whatever, whatever, barcode, one more. So comma at the end of that, photo, dollar, val, in, photo. So again here, don't forget the comma, because we've added something new. One more field and value, no final comma. At this point, we can start to test it, that it's saving the data of the photo, but it won't display the photo yet. That won't be too complicated, but let's, let's test it out at this point. Save it and run it. Um, check if you've got any errors before you run it. Uh, save it and run it, and then uh, go to your app and try to take a photo, and let's see if the photo app appears on the device. And try to take a photo of whatever. We don't have any comics in here today, but Take a photo of your pencil or something and see if it works. Let me check my error list first. This is, what, this is one of the things I really like about Cordova in that it's like a lot of pieces of a puzzle or 
maybe better yet, like Legos. Cordovas like Legos. Here are different pieces. What can you make out of it? So at the Cordova site, I see, well, I have the ability to take a photo. I have, uh, you know, geolocation. I have vibration and sound. Putting all of those pieces together, I, I make my app. I have my, my idea of the app, but what I want it to do could be shaped on those pieces. And whatever, after those dozen or so plugins at Cordova website, uh, you can go off and, and search online and find more plugins that do more things from third parties. The downside, of course, is as you're seeing here, uh, it takes longer to compile the first time after adding a new plugin and new code because it has to process all this new stuff. Here we go, it's coming up. So, I'm going to go to save a comic, I have a brand new icon, snap a pic. I take a I hit that and it says allow uh, Campos CBDB to take a picture and record video. Yes, allow that. Allow Campos to access photos. Sure, that's normal. Uh, my output over here in the JavaScript console uh, take a photo is running. We exited the app. So we we exited our app for a moment to go to the save a photo. I'm going to take a very artistic photo of my pen over here. Take a photo of it. The, this is always going to depend on the device also. What it, is there a button with the camera that takes the photo? Is there, do you just tap on the image to initiate the photo? Then after I take the photo, in my case, there's a little check mark that I like the photo or a sort of a re redo button, and that depends on the device. Some of them have like a check mark or an X. Okay, I like the photo, I'll click check mark on that. It takes me back to my app over here, success, photo path. So in my device, in the storage, in the Android, in embedded in my app, there's the unique identifier of my app. In the cache, there's photo number 158 whatever dot JPEG. And I'm going to then save the, the comic. It's the pencil man number one. <clears throat> save that comic saved I won't be able to view the photo just yet we'll do that in a moment but let's confirm let's confirm there that uh, that's working so uh, did it work for you did your camera appear did it take a photo anyone need a little help Put my JavaScript back here.
All right, so at this point, if we have one half of the one side of the coin, which is to take the photo, the other half of it is to view the photo. I want to view the photo that's attached to this comic. When I view info, I've got the various fields, and I want to also show the photo in the, um, in the view info screen. Now, we need to confirm that in the view info screen we have, you know, a placeholder for it to go, and then we write the JavaScript to fill in the placeholder. So just to remind ourselves, back on the index.html file, in the pop comic info, pop info, pop view comic, yeah, in the pop view comics info, line 230 or so, we've got that section, which uh, behaves like a pop-up. It pops up. It shows you the name, the number, etc., the barcode of the of the comic, and then we had a placeholder here of image with a source that's empty. 
we were then in the JavaScript able to fill in paragraph 0 is the name, paragraph 1 is the number, etc., etc., paragraph whatever is the barcode. Well, next we need to do something with this image. So we have the structure, the placeholder set up. We did that a little while ago. But we've got the, the, the placeholders set up in the HTML. Let's go to the JavaScript. And we'll go to our, um, I guess it was under function no comic info. So it's our function where we view more info, edit comic info, edit comic prep, delete comic, oh, show comics info. OK, so function show comics info is where we had um, populate every placeholder in the pop-up. We use eq pseudo selector to select a paragraph from a sequence starting from zero. So the zero with paragraph displays the name success.title. The sixth or fifth paragraph it should be barcode uh, success barcode. So we had our note here. To do, we need to do the barcode, which we did, so I'm going to remove that note. That's how we got our barcode to display, that it was the, the same as before. Go find that div, space, a paragraph equaling one of the items in sequence, and write some HTML. Write barcode, and then the actual barcode in the success object. For image, it's going to be something similar, but with a little twist. Because uh, we are dealing with things in the in the pop-up, but they're slightly different. be similar so here's our here's our shortcut you can take the the previous line and then just press control D on it and it'll duplicate it and it is then going to be six there's a there's a sixth paragraph right one two three four five six or zero one two three whatever so there's a six, paragraph number six a paragraph that equals six that's exactly the same. What's going to be different here, however, is it's not going to be .html. Looking further at what we've got here, the, this, this worked because we said, go find a div with this ID. And you'll find the zero with paragraph where we will write HTML. In our case here, we've got go find this ID. You'll find the sixth paragraph. But then we have an image with a source attribute that's empty. So I want to set the attribute of the image in this paragraph in this div. So before I show you what method it is, in that div, in the sixth paragraph, in the image, we're going to set an attribute. Make sure there's a space here. It's basically reading from right to left. This is inside of this, is inside of this, and those spaces are very important. Now we're saying jQuery, go find this div space and then a paragraph which is the sixth paragraph equaling the sixth paragraph and then an image we want to set the 
the source attribute. So we have ATTR attribute. So note different syntax for the image. We select the image in the seventh paragraph of the div and then set a value to the src attribute. Source attribute of this image in the seventh paragraph in that div. Source attribute. Well, ATTR is generically to read or write an attribute. The attribute in question is SRC. This, leaving it as is, would read what's in the source attribute. If I had a class attribute, it would read what was in the class attribute. If I had a data dash icon, it would read what was in that attribute. Okay, I don't want to read, I want to write. So one more item here, comma, the path to the photo. So now we've specified which image in which paragraph, what attribute, what value. And when you save it and run it, it might not be perfect yet because we'll need to style it a bit more perhaps via CSS. But now it will attempt to display the, the image that we've got stored in the memory. In the, in the pouch database. Now it will attempt to set the source attribute of the image to the path. And that's what we need. To display an image, we need a path to the image. Not the raw data, but a path to the image. And that's what's stored in the database. I'm going to run that. And I hope to get my image. It'll probably still be sized wrong, but we'll fix that via CSS. Try that out. So I know I've saved at least one comic with a photo. I'm going to view comic, and then I'm going to go to the info. And in my case, I see only a portion of the photo, and it's really too big, and it's super terribly low quality. It looks like something out of the original Nintendo, and it's uh, the pencil. Um, I need to fix the size. I'm just I'm not going to leave it at five percent quality. I'm going to have that at 50 or 75% or something. The size is getting to be the size that I had originally captured, but now I think it's still too big. Okay, we'll fix it with CSS in a moment. But the photo now should start to display in that info box. And I'll make a note here and then we'll take our first break. Uh, perhaps you're noticing something here. We can say ATTR is the generic attribute reader writer jQuery method command. We've previously used another but more specific attribute reader and writer. Anyone perhaps remember what that one was? What's that? Write.document? 
Um, not quite. We had over here, when we were creating data ID into the row, we were setting data attributes. We had one called dot data. Use a uh, create a variable that keeps track of the ID of the currently selected row of comics. So in line 500, um, we have the temp comic. We have this comic dot data. This is what I'm getting at here. That this is the other more specific version of it. Um, dot data is the specific reader writer jQuery method but only for data dash x attributes so we could have used ATTR back on line 500 that would have needed to be to have been written as attribute ATTR quotes data dash ID and then whatever else we had there. But we use sort of the shortcut of, of simply dot data ID. Both of these are equivalent. One is not one is not more right than the other. They both accomplish the same thing. I would possibly nitpick about saying the correct one would be data because it's less to type, less to mistype. It also saves a few bytes in memory. This one here takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 bytes. This one takes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It takes three more. Or how many is that? Five more. It takes five more bytes of data. Not megabytes or gigabytes or anything like that. Just bytes. One character is a byte. And so I would sort of argue that the correct one would be data because it's less to write and less bytes, less memory usage. And all those little bytes add up because bytes add up to megabytes and megabytes add up to gigabytes and such. So both of these would have worked. And we used both. One for one that is a data ID and one that could be generically for anything. So we saw right now ATTR, we could say set an ID of this whatever to be uh, you know in uh, an input field for voice or video. This would be to to set Uh, this would be to, to read the, the input field of um, in video that has that ID. So we so again JavaScript and jQuery and all that is very powerful because uh, it allows you to uh, create JavaScript code, read and write, and alter uh, HTML code, create tags, create content, even read and write and alter attributes, and all of that. It's very cool. So if you're displaying your image, good. We'll take a break. If it's not displaying the image, we'll figure it out after the break. Uh, we'll do a little bit of polish with some CSS. I don't like how the image is kind of weird and not really centered and it's too big. <clears throat> I also said that I wanted to add some zebra striping to the table. Right now it still looks plain and it looks really small. I wanted to take up more space and color it nicely, so we'll do a little bit of CSS. So at this point, um, let's take our break. It's about 7.05. We'll take a break until 7.15. Put the code in the folder and we'll make sure your code works.